I did ask to, to borrow her vehicle, a car hit me from behind. Look at her being irate and mean, the person that she is. I didn't want to deal with it, so I hopped on a plane and I went back to North Carolina. Whoa, 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 whoa. She called me two okay, days. Okay, talking to her now. A lot of our butting heads started one night when he had friends over to play cards. We had a confrontation. They had come home after last call. They were all very drunk. And I, very, very drunk, and said, are you calling me a liar? And then okay. he charged at me with his fist clenched. OK. Plaintiff Yolanda Grant is suing her cousin for crashing her pickle truck and fleeing the scene. Defendant Nadine Williams says she's terrified of her cousin, and the accident wasn't her fault. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. Case number seven on the docket, Grant and Grant versus Williams. The plaintiff, Ms. Grant, you are suing the defendant, Ms. Williams, in the amount of $2,263 for breach of contract. What exactly happened? I brought this case before you today because the old me would have had handled it in a different way, and, and I would probably that? be in jail myself. Oh. But being the businesswoman that I am today, yes, you know, the successful businesswoman that I am today, yeah. I decided to bring it before you and let you handle it, Judge Derry. Okay. Um, this is my husband, LaPrell. Nice to meet you. And this is my cousin, Nadine. So we have the whole family here. <laughs> Pretty yes, much. Sir. Good. And, you know, Nadine was like a mother to me. It took me six years to get this business together. Um, what business? I have a company. Yeah. It's called One Stop Custom Designs. One Stop Custom Designs. Yes, and the reason why it's called that is because we make pickled anything and everything. And they don't taste You good. can pickle anything? Um, yes, anything, yes, yeah. anything. And they don't taste good either. I we don't... have, yes they do. We have pickled oh, pig okay. feet. We have pickled eggs. We have pickled, you know, pickled asparagus. asparagus. We have pickled garlic. We have pickled mushrooms. We have hot and spicy pickled okra. We have chow chow. You are in the pickling business. Yes. Because yes. we sell in bulk. Yeah. So we got a Ford Explorer. Perfect for pickles. Beautiful, beautiful. But it's because we can deliver our cases. What happened? I had wanted her to come up for a week and help us with deliveries. After we, okay, deliveries were going fine, and we closed down about 6.30. About 10.30, she called us, and she asked us if she could. Need I remind you, we only use this vehicle for company purposes. Right. Oh but with me. So she called you to ask, can I just use your, can to, I? Yeah, she said she wanted to go pick somebody up. Now, what so happened? So within the three, three hours, she should have been back. Yeah. After four hours, I'm calling her phone. I'm not getting no answer. It's just oh, ringing you know and because ringing and ringing. now it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, now it's just ringing and ringing and ringing. Oh, do you tell me what happened. OK, Judge Jerry, I'll tell you. And tell the truth. OK. I did ask to borrow her vehicle yes. to go pick my cousin up. Yes. OK, on my way back from the airport, a car hit me from behind. Yes. And it went over to the media, and it kind of messed the doors up and stuff. So look at her being irate and mean the person that she is, I didn't want to deal with it, so I hopped on a plane and I went back to North Carolina. Whoa, 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 whoa. She called me two okay, days Okay, please, later. stop. I'm talking to her now. Okay. All right. So, wait, okay. well, wait a second. You borrowed her vehicle at about 10 o'clock in the evening. While you're doing that, you're on the highway? Yes, Judge. And Jerry. a car or truck hit you from behind. From what behind. hit you from behind? Uh, it was a car that hit me from behind. A and car. It, what, it color, off. what color was the car? Judge Jerry, I don't know, because I was just, I was so upset about the whole thing. You're driving. Yes. Normal sir. speed. Yes. A car comes up from behind you. Yes. Did you stop and then you got hit? No, I was going. So and you were they going, and this car hit you from behind. Yes, yes Judge Jerry. Because it was going faster than you? Yes, Judge Jerry. Was it in the same lane? Yes. Was Judge he trying Jerry. to change lanes or whatever? I think they were trying to change lanes. I, well, I'm not sure, Judge Jerry. But they did hit me from behind, and the car did go over to the median and kind of messed the car up a little bit. Oh, so your car rolled to the median. Yes. You immediately get out of the car. Yes, I was afraid for my life because well, I didn't have to that deal with it. Okay, okay. Work. So you got out of the car. Yes. And you didn't bother for a second to see what hit you? I'm not you sure. You don't know what the color of the car was, you don't? No, I didn't see any of that. Okay. I was so upset. Okay, well, I can understand, and you probably were scared. Oh, my gosh, I've just been in an accident. So one of two things a person normally would do. You would, number one, call the owner of the vehicle. Oh, my gosh, I've just got hit by a car. What do you want me to do? And two, 
Well, you call 911, you call the police and say, I've just been hit. It's a hit and run. Could you come to this location? Which one of those two things did you do? Neither one. Neither one, Judge Jerry. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm scared of her. Um, she's jumped on me a couple of times. I, I really well, feel uh, Why you didn't you call the... beating up men stronger than me, so you bigger got, than so me. So what did you do? You I left town? Panicked. I panicked and I left town. She I called me two you days left the, later. I can't talk yes, sir, to her if you're interrupted. Yes, Judge Jerry. Yes. I left the truck right where it was, and I on hopped the side the of the road. Yes, Judge Jerry. What did you do when you got out of the car and it's on the side of the road? You walked to the next exit. Yes, I did, Judge Jerry. Yes, I did, and I called Uber and I went. And to you the, called Uber. And I left and I went back home. If yes, you Judge called Jerry. Uber, why didn't you at least leave them a message what had happened to the car, and so they can pick the car up? I did. I called her two days later, Judge. Two Jerry. days later. Yes. But that didn't give her a chance to get the police to find out who might have hit her, anything. Yeah, well, I was she scared. couldn't she, do anything about it. Well, I was, I was scared for my life, Your Honor. I mean, she's beat me up a couple of times. She you were in an me. Uber. She couldn't get you. You're well, on the cell phone. You call her up. She's crazy. Yeah, well, you just leave a car there, and, and, and you skip town. <laughs> you skip town right. for two days without telling her where her vehicle is. You know that's not right. Well, you know, Do she... we have photos of this car? What happened to it? Well, we even picked up the vehicle. The doors on the driver's side will now no longer open. When they hit the vehicle, it pushed her forward yes. over into the median. Which is understandable. And, yeah, and it jammed so... the doors. Okay, and I here get goes that. the estimate as well. Do you have insurance? Yes. yes. And when we, when she spoke with us, I said, okay, you know, I didn't blow up right then. When she told us two days later, two days. Later, when I blew up was when we got there yeah, and idea. seen what would happen. And what's the estimate for repairs here? $2,262. Yes, sir. And this is the thing. She had, when, when we called her back and asked her how it happened, yeah. she was very short with us and then she got belligerent. But then she promised to pay all of the damage costs. Okay, you finally called two days later, yes, yes. realizing you should have called before, yes. right? And you did say that I'll pay for this. I'm so sorry. I don't owe Miss Grant anything, Your Honor. You borrowed her car. You don't dispute that. No, I don't. When the car was under your care, I'm believing you, you were hit from behind. The accident was not your fault. What is your fault is how you behaved once it happened, because she has a right to believe that when she loans someone something, they will take reasonable care of it. The reasonable care may not have been, gee, you should have avoided the accident. It wasn't your fault, let's say. Right. But reasonable care is that if something happens, a reasonable person calls the person whose property it is to tell what happened. A reasonable person calls the police in this case, gets an accident report, says that it was hit and run. For all you know, you could have been hurt. True, Your so, Honor you didn't act responsibly, and for two days, their business didn't know where their van was to conduct their business. They did suffer damage because of your behavior, which was not responsible. Because I'm afraid of her. I mean, she's jumped on me I'm a couple not, of times. This particular incident is your fault. So with that being the case, judgment for the plaintiff, $2,262. Thank you, I'm happy. I mean, I'm happy, but at the same time, I still hope that we can still work out our family differences and become happy again. We will make amends. Like, we are family, we're cousins, so we'll get straightened out. Plaintiffs Trudy and Nathaniel Lewis are suing their ex-roommate for skipping out on his share of the rent and bills. Defendant Eric Tryon claims the plaintiffs were so messy, he had no choice but to move out. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. It's case 106 on the docket, Lewis and Lewis versus Tryon. Let me see what we have here. The plaintiffs, Mr. and Ms. Lewis, you are suing the defendant, Mr. Tryon, for $1,111 for unpaid rent, utility bills, late fees, and lost wages. So we met the defendant through an old coworker of mine who had yes. placed an ad online for a roommate. Yes. Um, and in September of 2017, myself, my husband Nathaniel, and his twin brother Isaac 
Yeah, uh, we that. signed yeah. a lease with the defendant. Um, initially, when we moved in, we felt everything went really well. It was going great. Over time, we started to realize... So you had... all signed a lease with the landlord? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Over time, we started to realize that we had different lifestyles that were not very... Uh, How would you describe the lifestyles as different? Um, we had different hours that we were awake oh, okay. versus sleep. Um, I don't usually have a lot of friends over. He had friends over. Got it. Uh, That's not true. What not? Okay. Yeah. So we were relatively messy, like we wouldn't immediately clean up our, our dishes and stuff, and so it, they kind of piled up a little bit. And uh, it, a lot of our butting heads started one night when he had friends over to play cards. I sent a text message saying, hey, can you guys keep it down? If you're going to be loud, can you not do it on a work night? His response to that was something to the effect of, no, that's not going to happen. So I went down, we had a confrontation. Eventually it got to a point where he started separating our cans, and Ike has a, a good story. Your cans? Where, yeah. Um, in Oregon, you pay a 10 cent deposit to get to buy a beer or soda sure. and you take it back and you get that back and yes. so we were just putting them all in one communal bag and then he started to separate them and Ike and you are his, about obviously his twin brother yes. and also the fourth roommate in the situation yeah. yes he um so he was separating the cans at, out from each other to be also because he was moving his stuff out so he wanted to make sure everything was separated for some reason it was a, a kind of petty a little bit and then like the next week um, it's just didn't matter to him anymore he's because he was like I don't care about right. that anymore. Right, he had a friend over who had put a can into the into ours mm -hmm. and you want you said whoa no. Ike had brought home um, many people up 10 to 15 people from the bar at was, 3 o'clock in the morning. It was yes. only four. They had, they had come home after last call they were all very drunk. One of his friends who was drunk said that they would like to uh, start cleaning um, because they saw all the mold and they saw all the bugs oh, all the ants and flies that were flying around the kitchen. Mm and decided that they were gonna start bagging up the, the cans. I said, go ahead, put them all in the same bag. And I turned around very, very drunk and said, are you calling me a liar? And I'm like, I'm not calling you a liar. I would just like for this to be cleaned up. And he's like, you said that you never wanted okay. these cans to be connected. And I'm like, I just want them to be cleaned up. All and right. I'd also like it to be quiet, please. And then okay. he charged at me with his fist clenched. Okay, what I'm sensing here are people that don't get along. Yes, yes exactly. Okay, and so. You're leaving. Yes. Okay. Right. And now we get to the part of what the lawsuit is about. Yes. yes. That you all agreed that he would leave, and you agreed that you wanted to leave. Mm -hmm. And so an agreement was signed. The agreement was signed based on the information that we have text message proof of him telling us that he would pay the money that was owed. He, he told us in that order he was moving out and he said he would pay rent and bills. You have this. Bailey, if I have the copy of the, there it is. the form that if you'd like. We signed it under the understanding, which he led us to believe, that he would pay the money that was owed to us. And he said that on multiple occasions, and then before we had signed it, he was insisting that we go sign it. He sent several texts, and in person said, yeah, he, have you guys signed this? Asked me right, in person this is signed the signed release in front of the landlord saying that you all and the landlord are releasing Eric Tryon from any financial responsibility on the above apartment. So as of this date, he was released of any financial responsibilities yes. he had. Yes, yes. Before, before, before we signed, we signed it, it. Yeah. before we even told him we were going to sign it, and he insisted that we sign and it, and then he told us he'd pay. And according to Oregon Law, ORS 165.042, it says, the person obtains the signature of a person to a written instrument by knowingly misrepresenting any fact. This is a misdemeanor in Oregon. We could yes. have him charged. Uh, Sorry, I had never seen this form before. The this isn't a form. Place. This is a law. This well, is the Oregon thing. law. The point is... There's no point in signing a release of any financial responsibilities he has still left on the apartment if he's paying the rent for the rest of the time that he's not there. Then why well, would he, he was, sign no, the no, release? We're not asking, we're not asking for no, the no, rest of the lease. We no. just want the last month's the rent. Last. He'll host the movie now, give us five days, then we would have to rush to get the rent together yeah. for that time. And sure. he also said he was going to give us that rent the day he moved out, which he didn't. What is the month that we are talking about where they're saying you should pay the rent and you're saying you shouldn't? They're referring to March, I believe. March. It was March 26th. So they're saying you owe for the month of March. You're saying, and you hadn't paid that yet. I, ha I actually have a document saying that... Uh, Did you dated. pay for the month of March? Yeah. 
You uh, paid March for the 1st, I have a withdrawal from my bank, uh, $589, which is the amount That was for the previous month. Yeah. Well, you don't pay at the end of the month for the month you just were at. You do pay at the beginning of the month for the month you're going to be yeah. there. So if he paid on March 1st, that is for the month of March. But then he, we get No into, one pays for the rent to, after they've been there. We get into there. the point of him not giving enough, us enough notice to find another That's roommate. a separate question. Or, or, to, or to have the financial obligation. Okay, you're just months. arguing about it. Okay. Hold on. I'm sorry. But for the month of March, he has paid. This agreement is March 26th. So it means no more financial responsibility like coming into the month of April. Yeah, he, he sent, sent an text. email saying he would pick up the rest of his stuff, yeah. and then he would bring a truck and he would pay, pay rent. rent and utilities. You knew that you had paid on March 1st. That's right. So when you emailed them saying that you were going to send them some money, bring some money, what was that money for? When I went to sign documents that day, um, I needed to make sure I had the money that I needed, so I would be... For what What would you owe the landlord if you paid If there the was rent? a termination fee, I had not seen the document that you're, you're looking at right now, so I brought money um, to offer to the landlord if they Did you pay it. the utility bills for March? I did not pay the utilities bills for much March because in that text message, Trudy's asking me about, um, so awkward question, I see that you've been moving your things out, and my response is... Um, Things have been so messy in the apartment lately. They've essentially uh, constructively evicted me. You didn't give a 30-day notice, did you? I gave them notice the last time I paid rent. I said, this is going to be the last time. We have no, a text message from March 26th saying, the time has come. I'm letting you know I'm officially moving out. I'll pay rent and stuff in a few days and grab the rest of my furniture this weekend. You didn't give 30 days notice. I gave and notice to the landlords. Not 30 days. Okay. Where is it? Show me. I don't have. A Everyone's just saying thing. stuff yeah. here. Yeah. I want to see it. You, you didn't give the official 30-day notice. In reviewing all these matters here, and it's complicated because you all started out as well-meaning people trying to share a, an apartment. You have different lifestyles, and it's not working. What's nice is that there's agreement that you're just going to leave. You'd rather be someplace else, and they'd rather not have the responsibility of trying to adjust their lifestyles to what you want to do. And the landlord gets it too, with a document that they signed, releasing you, that they agreed to release you from the rest of your tenancy there. The price of them letting you out of it ought to be that they're entitled to more than five days notice that you're leaving, so that they can get their part of your rent together. You are obligated to pay your share of April's rent. You're not living there, but that's the 30-day notice that you didn't give them. I find for the plaintiffs in the amount of $588. He had just as we much of a mess. Oh, oh, we had to sorry. deal with not just a mess, we had to deal with constant cat pee. We had to deal with uh, constant BO. We had to deal with our house always smelling like farts. There were always people sleeping on the couches and snooping around my bedroom, and they would leave their friends there uh, after they had left for the day, just there all day long. Thanks for watching. Now please approach the bench. The way I look at it, you have two options here. Option A, watch more Judge Jerry. Option B, watch more Jerry Springer. The choice is yours. Now get out of my courtroom. You have more clips to watch. And don't forget to subscribe.